I think it was really in line with what the buy side was probably looking for. And I think that's why you're seeing a muted stock reaction today. I think the important thing to note is that they reiterated their full year view. So all in all, not much um, in the quarter that changes the thesis in terms of when things bottom out. Uh, you know, I think the widely held view is that as we get to the to the late part of this year, second half into the fourth quarter, you could start to see same store sales start to inflect. Maybe you get a little bit of a helping hand from housing as we exit the year. So, so Drew, give us a sense. What's what are these companies, the Lowe's and the Home Depots? What are they saying about their customer base? I mean, are they stretched? Are they struggling? Um, have they spent all their stimulus? What are we hearing about the consumer from from these two companies? Yeah, great question. I mean, the, the Home Depot and Lowe's, Lowe's consumer tend to be homeowners. That's their predominant customer. They tend to be higher income, so they're a little bit more well off. But look, they're, they're still at the mercy of everything that's happening in the broader economy. You've got the cumulative impact of inflation over the last several years. You've got a weak housing market. Um, and what we're actually hearing is that a majority of the weakness is centered around those big ticket discretionary categories. Um, an interesting dynamic within that that they actually alluded to during the conference call is that <clears throat> over the course of the last year, a lot of the weakness in big ticket was concentrated in those categories that were pulled forward during the pandemic. So they call them single item purchases, think things like grills, patio furniture, outdoor power equipment, things that you, you tend to purchase once and then you don't need for a while. <clears throat> but they're starting to note a normalization in those categories, which is an encouraging sign. On the other hand, where they're seeing more weakness is in the categories that tend to be debt financed, um, where those higher interest rates are having an impact on the consumer. So they called out, you know, kitchen cabinets, countertops, really kitchen and bath, and that's about 7% of their sales. So it's an interesting dynamic that's at play there. That is. So, and it all points to what we're kind of learning about the consumer anyway. So John Tucker, when he's redoing his closet to his bathroom, is going to a contract or supply store to buy stuff because it's cheaper. Well, it's not cheaper. It's just if you're going to do something like that, a big project, you go with quality. And okay. my argument is I just, the suppliers to Home Depot, I find a lot of them are kind of junky stuff. So to that point, how many people are like John just, Tucker? Just my opinion. <laughs> sort of just going to different options. And maybe that's a quality thing. Maybe it's a pricing thing. Yeah, look, I, I think the home improvement space as a whole is really under pressure. And what we've heard is that, you know, people are deferring their projects. So they're they're ta taking, instead of doing that large kitchen bathroom model, maybe they're doing something smaller um, or they're actually starting to trade down in certain categories within the kitchen and bath. You know, in terms of, you know, the supplier situation, and it's an, it's an interesting dynamic that, you, you know, you mentioned plumbing and, you know, where are contractors purchasing their, their goods? Is it Home Depot or is it a competitor? The, the pro market is really the area of focus for Home Depot, and they're, they're attacking it in an interesting way, and that's by going after what, what they describe as a $250 billion opportunity for more complex projects. Um, and, and basically what they're trying to do is consolidate supplier relationships. So if you have a contractor who would typically manage a relationship with you know, a door distributor, windows, decking, yep. um, plumbing fixtures. They want to take that all under one umbrella, the Home Depot umbrella, and kind of make it a one-stop shop. And that's a big opportunity for them. Hey, Drew, let's step back. Uh, in addition to the home, you know, the uh, these uh, retailers, you also follow the home builder sector <clears throat> in general here. I got it, a 30-year fixed at north of 7% here. I mean, where do rates have to go to free up some inventory in, in this market here? Because if you talk to a a real estate agent, there's nothing going on out there. Yeah, and, and once again, I think you need to make the distinction between what's happening in the existing home market and what we're seeing in the new home market. Um, rates have come down to just under seven and a quarter most recently. So that means that when you go into the new home market, the builders are buying down your rates somewhere in the five and a half percent range. And that's how really how they're getting traffic through the door. They're able to make those monthly payments more palatable than what you're seeing in the resale market. Now, we talk about the resale market and that's really what's important for the home depots of the world you know it, it's it's hard to get excited about you know a, a significant rebound in activity when you have rates that are above seven percent um you know the good news is that you know if you could call this good news is we're hovering at multi-decade decade lows in transaction activity so we're probably somewhere at trough levels at this point so we think as we get through the end of this year and into next year 
maybe you start to get a little bit of a rebound. But again, I think, you know, to see more activity, you'd probably need to see rates somewhere in the 6% range. Mm -hmm.